This is the Fast Five Minutes presented by Parts Galore here on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cape. We're moving positions, so we we're also going to do moving that fast too. Yeah. What's under the cup? It's under that one. Uh, you win. <laughs> so a big issue uh, that came up this past week, the future of Cast Tech quarterback J. Rue Campbell, who had at one time committed to play football at Michigan State. That commitment seems to be withered away, but sentenced to 60 days in jail after some counseling. And your reaction at first overall, John, to the sentencing? Well, I mean, obviously it's a tough situation all the way around, but actions have consequences. And that's the lesson that needs to be learned here. And hopefully, you know, the jail, some people have an issue with the length and the, the, the severity of the sentence. I think, you know, he got away from a felony. I think it's it's fair to say he, he got off easy in some respects. And if he learned any lesson from this, maybe this will help that lesson to hold that actions do have consequences and you can't just do whatever you want to do even if you're the star athlete that's the hope that can come out of this you know it goes back to kind of what i was talking about with the lions and the constant attention on yeah. these types of stories throughout the year Allen iverson had the same type of thing happen to him back when he was in high school i wouldn't even know anything about it these are issues that can be overcome 57 days in jail is going to be an enormous eye-opener for this kid but let's give him a chance to rehabilitate himself he seems to be contrite at this point it was a horrific thing that he did but hopefully he will learn from it and he will become a better person and we'll see if he can make himself better and he's not going to come back till the season begins that'll be interesting in september it will be interesting to see if you looked at what Dan Gilbert said earlier this week about the Detroit Pistons. Another thing that got people stirring because he at one point said the Pistons should not be called the Detroit Pistons because they don't play in Detroit proper. Sam Van Gundy didn't like that, do you? Well, it's completely understandable. And, you know, Dan Gilbert, as the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers and a person who's so heavily invested in the city of Detroit, is going to get that jab in as many times as he can. And the stage is being set because the new arena is being built downtown, and there's a lot of conjecture about whether or not the Pistons might play there. Would it be cool to see them play there? Yeah. I love the concept of actually both teams maybe doing a little swap where they play maybe 10 games a year, Red Wings up at the Palace, Pistons down at the new arena. I don't think we'll ever see that happen because of the separation of church and state and let you Doris, <laughs> but it would be cool. Well, yeah, and it, people are criticizing Dan Gilbert for being self-serving because of everything that he has invested around what would be the Pistons playing downtown. I don't care. It's city serving. That's what we need is we need more business downtown, and how big, how big a business would that be coming downtown? I have no problem with him constantly, as you said, poking the bear a little bit. Tom Gorse has said he'd be open to talking to Dan Gilbert about it, so let's talk about it. Keep talking about it. I'm fine with it. Under the buzzer, you guys got it in there. That was pretty impressive. There it is. Well, the Clippers sold earlier this week for $2 billion. Donald Sterling out of the NBA. I think we can all agree that's a good thing. Are these absurd prices a good thing, a bad thing? You're a columnist. You get to write about national things yeah. a lot. You get to see this a lot. Is this good or bad? Well, depends on who you are, but you know what? It's good for it's good for Tom Gorse. It's good for all these other NBA owners because and Adam Silver, who's six months on the job, has already gotten rid of Donald Sterling and now has made probably hundreds of millions for all the rest of his owners. Uh, the, the Milwaukee Bucks sold for five hundred fifty million dollars. People thought that was crazy. This team was valued at something like six, seven hundred million. It just sold for two billion. Labor peace through 2017. The players are now looking at that last labor contract they signed and thinking, boy, did we really get taken because they don't share in these profits. The owners are striking a rip. You know what they should do if you're Tom Doris? Lower ticket prices. <laughs> now you know what your team is worth when you're going to sell this thing. You got eight, 9,000 people coming to the Palace at Auburn Hills. More people will come if you lower the price. It may sound sacrilege, but if you're concerned about your long-term standing here with your franchise that you're trying to rebuild, let's get more people in the seats. And you know you're getting that money in the back end when you sell it. You can cut those ticket prices by $10 per. Come on, Tom Doris, do it. Good luck. That's the that. ultimate point, I think, in all of this. If you look at what the Pistons have done the past few years, it's basically put groups into there with the ticket sales. Good call. I like it. The NBA Finals predictions, Miami has no problem selling tickets. Neither do the San Antonio Spurs. We get a rematch. Who's winning? I think the San Antonio Spurs are going to win this thing. Woo! And I brought up a topic last night on Twitter about the Spurs. How many of those guys are Hall of Famers? Oh, no. And I think you got all three when you talk about Parker, Ginobili, and Duncan, who's obviously a shoe-in. And then I said, well, would they be Hall of Famers if they were in the NFL? And I think the answer there would be no, because if you have a guy like Tim Brown, who's not in the NFL with everything that he did, I don't think Amanda Ginobili would make it. But when you look at the body of work, the resume of these guys, 
they can put a nice cherry on top of their individual Sundays by beating this Heat team. And I think they're going to do it this year. To think that you could win a title in 99 with a star player and a coach and then come back, you know, 15 years later and win another title is unbelievable in any league, let alone the NBA. I'm going to pick the Heat. I think their offense right now with Chalmers, with, with, with Ray Allen hitting shot, you know he's going to win a game with a shot at the buzzer. But here's what I would say. Without Tony Parker, who didn't play the end of that game last night, even if he's 50% or 75%, I don't think it happens for the Spurs. It would have been much juicier had we had the Thunder, but I think a lot of people are looking for the Spurs to get some redemption against the C team. It'll be a good series, I think, bottom line, with or without Parker. Well, whoever the Rangers draw in the Stanley Cup Finals, it's going to be a great series. We've had an awesome Western Conference Final with Chicago and L.A. Whoever gets there, John, who do you think ends up with the cup against uh, you know home ice used to be as well you'll find out in game seven what it's worth it hasn't been worth that yeah, much here lately in the NHL either and Daryl Sutter the Kings coach has won a ton of these game sevens he's got a guy Justin Williams watch for him to score some crazy goal tonight I think the Kings will win this one despite you know the, the way the Blackhawks have sort of recreated the magic they had last year against the Red Wings um, I would go with them and I think Jonathan Quick they either goalies played great in this series Jonathan Quick has the talent to just come up and pull a carry price in, in game seven. I love it. I'm disagreeing yeah. with yeah, you all day. <laughs> 1994, I was a senior in college. I had just graduated. It was a magical year in New York City, and I grew up a, a Rangers and a Knicks fan. That was an awesome summer. I think that Lundquist is going to get hot, and I think you cannot underestimate the absolute magic that overcomes a city when they make that push for the Stanley Cup. I think the Rangers will get it done. I think New York will be crazy, and I think that Henrik Lundquist will be the main reason why they win the Stanley Cup for the first time in 20 years. King I think Henry. the iconic shot from the Eastern yeah. Finals, especially in that yeah. final game, was when his leg kicked up he saved the puck that bounced right underneath there and kept it out he's been fantastic yeah. so has quick i think we're in store for some good finals